Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the bidirectional blending feature in iClone 8 that allows you to tweak the blending of a transition bidirectionally for optimized motion matching. If you have not yet watched the first two parts of this tutorial series, please watch them first for some background on this feature. Let's start with this simple scenario first, with two motions applied to this character. The first thing you'll notice is that the transition isn't very smooth. If we scrub through the timeline, you can see that he sort of jumps ahead a bit in the second clip, so let's look at how to fix that. The best way to refine blending between two clips is to take the second clip and drag it backwards a bit so that it overlaps with the first one, creating a transition area indicated by a white crossed out area. You can move the second clip around a bit to create a longer or shorter transition area. If you move it out so there is no overlap, there will simply be a blank area between the clips, and your character's motion will maintain the position of the keyframe at the end of the first clip until another clip begins. Each motion clip in iClone 8 will have small triangle gizmos in the corner, which you can use to adjust the duration and blending results of the transition. If I move the upper triangle on the first clip a bit earlier on the timeline, the motion will enter the transition to the last keyframe a bit earlier. Note that with the transition gizmo placed earlier, by the end of the clip, his left foot will be firmly planted and he is leaning forward. This indicates that the transition to the first frame of the second clip is taking place earlier, blended into the end of the first clip. However, there is no blending on the second clip, so it is unaffected. If we reverse the scenario by removing the blending on the first clip and instead lengthening the transition area of the second clip, you'll see a different result. If we do this, then notice at the end of the first clip that his left foot is not yet firmly planted and he is still leaning back a bit. This is because the blending is all set to happen in the beginning of the second clip instead, so the last pose from the first clip will be maintained for longer. Different scenarios and motions will require different timing and transition lengths, but in this case, the blending is fairly simple. If I bring the second clip back to overlap the first again, then the cross transition area will appear again. I can adjust the timing like I did before by clicking and dragging the edges of the transition area to get the best blending results for my two motions. There is no one size fits all solution here. Different motions in combination will require different timing and blending to get the ideal result. For example, in scenarios like this one that involve a character jumping and landing, timing can be a bit trickier. If the transition area is set too long, then the character will have an awkward float down to the landing position. In certain cases like this one, the transition can actually be quite short due to the nature of the motion. We want to keep the dynamic nature of the forward stumble after the jump, so the timing can be a bit quicker. However, we want to ensure that we don't blend over the details of these motions. It may help to change the playback speed on the timeline to something lower so you can see the playback in slow motion. This can often help to determine the correct blending level in motion clips that have a dynamic transition like these two. You also have more detailed control over the transition area by using Curve Editor presets. To adjust this, simply right-click on the target clip which will open up a few options such as Ease In and Out. By default, the transition curve is set to linear. The Ease In option means that there will be more heavy transition towards the end of the transition area. While with the Ease Out option, more of the transition will occur at the beginning. There is also a strength slider which can determine the severity of the curve. If we use an Ease In transition and increase the strength, you will see our character's balance move back slightly. This is because with a stronger Ease In value, the curve will be more steep, and most of the transition will happen in the last few frames, while the first frames of the transition will only have a small change. If I change the strength to a lower value, then the transition curve will spread more gradually over the transition area. The result is that at the same frame, he's leaning forward a bit more, indicating that more of the transition has already taken place. This can often create a smoother and more gradual transition that is closer to a linear transition. A final value here of something in the 60s will create a more dynamic and quicker transition to the second clip in the second half of the transition area. Let's look again at the scenario we had at the end of the second tutorial in this series, where our character was changing direction and stumbling over obstacles. We can follow the same process essentially here, 
by first dragging the second clip back to slightly overlap the first one and create the transition area. Then tweak the length of that area for smoother blending between the two motions. You can essentially repeat this process for most motions and even ones that are fairly different from each other can easily be blended into each other using this and other techniques. These are some of the basic motion editing features that are new with iClone 8 that have been added to help you save time with your animations and make your motion editing workflow easier and more efficient. Thanks for watching this tutorial series everyone. Hopefully you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next video.